Hi everyone. Um, a little while ago I bought Korg Legacy. Uh, I'd seen good things and I, and I liked the way it looked. Uh, but I just haven't had really had a chance to play with it. And a week or so ago I was on a train and in a hotel and a bit bored and I thought right let's have a proper play. And um, since then it's fast become one of my favourite music apps of all time. That's quite a statement I recognise. Um, I started off with Cubase and Trackers and Fruity Loops and moved on to Reason and then went on to Cubase again and Logic 8, 9 and 10 and Bitwig and Bits of Ableton and they're all fantastic. But there is something about the workflow of, um, of this app that makes uh, it a joy to write music on. It's quick, it's easy, it's intuitive, but there is depth that you can go to as well. So I thought I'd make a quick video uh, just to show what I've been working on. It's by no means finished, but also to show a few things that you may not be aware of that are, are really useful. Um, I've just updated to the latest version. I think I might have been a couple of versions behind because there's been some quite big changes. And we'll have a look at some of those. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to lock my screen because it would appear that if I go into uh, landscape mode, uh, QuickTime crashes and it doesn't like it. So um, uh, that's why. Right, let's get going. So first of all, um, one of the nice things that has been changed is the when you collapse and view the instruments or the mixing desk as well, uh, they used to completely disappear. Now you get a much more minimal version at the bottom. So if you want to go and have a look at your drum parts, uh, you don't have to expand it again. Uh, you can go straight back. Uh, you Sorry, you can go into it and look at it straight away. You can also scroll much nicer uh, from the top. Previously, you had these gadget buttons uh, in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, now, what does seem to have changed is that there used to be a, the, the gadget button, and what that did was allow you to change the instrument that you had. Now it's possible if I click that, yeah, there we go. So if you click the title, that's how you change your instrument. I'm just wondering, okay, no. So that's how you can scroll through uh, and let's take it back. Uh, let's have a look at some, uh, some sounds. So we've got the drum pattern here. Now I like working in 16 bar phrases because uh, I find I can put a bit more detail in. The one thing that I've noticed is that you can't view all 16 bars in one go. If you try and select them all, you have to hold number one and then hold 16. It's a bit fiddly if you've got big fingers like me. But all it shows you is eight at a time. Okay, that's not the end of the world. It would be nice uh, if it was possible to see all 16, especially if you're in uh, landscape mode as well. Now, one thing I don't understand, and if someone can show me, I'd be very grateful. You can obviously select instruments when you move to the select button and you can copy at this time, I cannot figure out how to paste. If I want to go and paste those later on in the track, how do I do that? If I click copy, I have no paste option. So maybe I'm missing something, but I just can't seem to see it. Uh, there's nothing really new or updated as far as I can see in the drum machine. Um, and I'll just play you a, a quick pattern. Now, one thing I have noticed that I really did my head in before is I couldn't figure out how to go between what I would call pattern mode and song mode. So let's play the first pattern. Uh, and the trick is the little green um, cycle icon at the very bottom next to play. Now when that's lit, when it's on, that first pattern will just loop. If we want to go into song mode, we turn it off and we'll hear that it will um, trigger pattern two. There we go, perfect. Now one thing I would like to do as well, and again, I don't know if this is possible, it'd be really nice to be able to name the scenes. I noticed that later on, if I make a copy, I get 14 copy, 14 copy two. It would be nice to be able to rename those. I can't figure out how to do it. It would also be nice to be able to rename tracks as well. They've changed it so you've got bigger buttons to choose your sounds. But again, uh, I don't. I have much more sounds than just bass, lead, drums and pads. I want vocals, effects, noise, all that kind of stuff. And I don't have any of that option. 
Now one thing, uh, again, that's quite useful is when you're dealing with a um, phrase or a part, you might not want it to loop. So one of the key buttons I found in uh, Gadget is the function button, which is at the very bottom left-hand corner. So I have a noise hit, oops, sorry. I have a noise hit which appears at certain points, but I don't want it to loop itself. So if I go into the actual sound or into the actual phrase and I go to function, there's the option to, uh, under play mode, loop or one shot. And obviously one shot means it will just play at once. Uh, even if you loop that phrase numerous, uh, loop that whole scene numerous times. And the way you do that is if again, if you go into function, you've got the option here. If you click four by four times one for the whole scene, you can choose how many times, ah, there's the name, right. I've discovered it. <laughs> ah, there you go. So I could call that intro two. Fantastic. But it's also where I can choose how many times I want to repeat it. So that's really, really handy. So that's the very first button there, four by four, uh, four, four times one. Now one other really useful feature as well uh, that they've updated is if you want to copy and paste a, uh, a phrase, uh, let's take the drum parts at the beginning. If you copy it, it now says paste. Previously, every button said copy, so and it wasn't clear that you were actually pasting it. So it was much nicer to be able to do it in there. Uh, also notice when function mode is on, uh, that you can change your instruments down here too. And if we expand it, uh, again, a very useful feature, if we duplicate an instrument, we get an, an exact copy. So if you want to switch from one bass line to another bass line, uh, uh, but keep the same instrument, but just use a different patch. Um, that could be a really, really nice way of doing it. Uh, also, your arrows down here help you move tracks around. So if I decided that I want the Chiang Mai, the other side of Brussels, I can just swap them over like that. Really handy. Okay, let's have a look at a few other features. Uh, oh, one other thing, sorry. It, I couldn't figure out in the last version I had how to move a scene. And I was having to start new scenes and copy individual things. If you want to move a scene, hold your finger and simply drag it to where you want to go. Uh, so again, when it comes to arranging, uh, Gadget is just fantastic. Um, <clears throat> let's have a little listen to some elements and uh, let's see what you think. So here you can um, hear the bass line. If I want to see the uh, automation, click on the automation lane and then choose uh, the automation that you want to hear. Now, I would love to be, have a line tool because I find it's a bit fiddly. Again, if I'm working with, say, eight bars, oops. I don't get very straight lines and I can't figure out how to how to do that. And again, I'm not the most adept. So I would love a line tool if that was possible. Um, but the filtering is really, really nice. And the automation works really, really well as well. It's very easy. The repeat on the um, on this instrument just sounds fantastic. Um, I think I've got it. There we go. So it's not an exact science. Uh, oops. See what I mean? That's where it's a bit annoying. Um, but it's very intuitive. Okay, uh, let's have a look at a few other bits. So. Um, this is a breakdown that I was working on, uh, and it's. It's relatively straightforward. Again, uh, I've removed some of the earlier elements. Uh, one of the things I love is Chiang Mai. The subs you get on it are just fantastic. So if you've got a good system, have a quick listen uh, because you can, you can really feel the low end 
and on kicks as well. I'm really impressed and I've done really no treatment at all. Now, whilst we're in the mixer, uh, one of the newest improvements that I can see is the IFX um, uh, feature. <clears throat> so, uh, if you click on that, you first of all got some EQ, uh, which is great. Uh, so you've got low, mids and highs, uh, and I haven't tried it yet, but from what I can tell, they're probably automatable. So if you want to EQ off your kick, for example, this is a great place to do it. You have to make sure you turn it on. So again, I'm assuming that you can record and automate that. And then I noticed another arrow and I was like, what's this? And you now also have a compressor. So I've added some compression to my bass. And if we take it off, it's subtle, but you can hear the difference. So the compressor is a real, really, really nice touch. Now it's quite feasible that what you would actually do is export all of these tracks as individual files, import them into Logic or Ableton or whatever it is you're working on and then use your hardware or your really nice expensive plugins to um, you know, finalize your song. And I will no doubt do that. But uh, for those on a budget or for those that don't have the capacity for a studio space, this is a great way to work. Uh, I haven't tried exporting parts yet, so I'm not sure how easy that is, whether you have to solo them individually or whether the app is clever enough to export each track. So I'm interested to see how that works. So I'm just going to, uh, I think that's most of the stuff that I want to uh, cover, to be perfectly honest. Um, I did purchase the Abu Dhabi um, instrument because it's lovely and because you can also import samples from Dropbox. So if you uh, click, um, I think it's under user. No, where is it? Sorry. Here we go. Import. And then if you've got your Dropbox account linked, um, then uh, you can go and find all the samples that you already have and bring them in. I don't think, I might be wrong, but I don't think you can do that yet on the drum machine. I'm going to have a quick check. I hope I'm wrong. Um, yeah, so it just seems that you've got the stock sound, so it would be really nice to be able to do that. Um, I think that's it. So, yeah, let's just have a quick listen and, and see what you think. <laughs> 